Swear it's been 700 degrees in here since you came in. Hi, my Jack Rogers. Welcome back to my channel. We're talking about structural cabling. So if you're going to be cabling an office for the very first time, what you've got to remember it is um, you need to get a, uh, an office layout. So you need to know the size of the building. So if you're actually on one floor, that's quite straightforward. But if you are cabling an office building, it's got multiple offices inside a big big building itself, then you obviously need to, to have a layout of the office for the floor. And obviously you need to work out how long the office is, how wide the office is, and obviously how tall the actual office building itself is. Because what you've got to do is, first of all, work out where you're going to put your comms room. You, there's no point in putting the comms room at the end of the building or saying when I'm going to build a building, it's going to be stuck there because we need to know the lengths between the offices back to the comms room because we've got uh, limits on this on these cables, 18 metres itself. So we're going to stick, I tend to stick to 70 metres, 75 metres maximum. So I've got that extra bit on my patch pad, patch lead itself. So you've got to realise if once this gets patched from the, com from the computer, um, PC user, to the patch panel in the comms room, then you're going to work out when I plug the patch lead into it, into the switch, that it's not going to be any more than 10 metres, okay? Or, or if you're going to lay up 75 metres, no more than 5 metres on the patch cable itself. Then you're in your 80 minute um, margin itself. So on the on the office layout, what you work, work out is the distance and length. So you can work out if I put the comms room in the middle, in, the, in an office in the middle building or like a cupboard or you've got some sort of space that you can just tie away as, as a comms room. Make sure if I get to, if I get to the left of the building to the right of the building they're going to be well in sort of forty meters each. Um, so the, the the length of itself. If the if the comms room has got to be slightly across, make sure if it is slightly across the building itself you can still get to that side of the building, and to the other side and the other side of the building, but not maximize any more than seventy meters. Then you pack a hunky dory. Going down as well, you've got to think about it. if you go down then you go left off to an office. You've got to consider all that cabling going down and going off left as well. So that's hence why you need to know the height of the building. So you can consider that the height of the building is going to be, say, say 20 metres tall or 30 metres tall, straight down to the bottom floor. Then And then and then, and then I've got a margin of X amount up to 75 metres to go that way as well. Sometimes uh, if an office is quite tall, it's got a lot of floors in between, it, you've got to also work out you're going to situate the commons room on the floor and which floor to go on. So again, if you cable upwards, or downwards it's going to meet the requirements or if you're going to put the comms room on the top floor you might need a small cable comm room on the bottom floor to service the floor above and below and so forth so you've got to work all that out it can be complicated but it's not that mega it's not rocket science either it's very very simple if you've got a big large building it's quite wide and tall not i've like a particular building i did which is uh, airport house in croydon we positioned the comms room on the second floor so and we had also a comms room on the top floor which is slightly off angle over this way so you went up and went across so this serviced all the top floor stuff and all around the floor around it because it all went round in a building shape okay and then we did uplinks from this comms room down to this comms room so we had switches in here servicing the users um, there so we had a switch for each room going into here then we had uplinks going from this cabinet to the comms room itself so there's those were data uh, there was data, internet, phones, and we had spare like we've been patching a fax or something up there as well on on, a, on an uplink. So we put in quite a few uplinks in there, and over time we end up having twelve uplinks from this cabinet to this cabinet, so we can actually have some private connection between them and stuff. So that's how we did it, and on the and the bottom floor was enough to run up to the second floor, and we didn't actually come into it. But the only problem we had is when we went across the building over that way. It was way too long because we could only go up around and that way and drop down or we, we couldn't go straight across which would have been probably easier we couldn't go down and straight across because again whatever way we took it or even took the top floor and went across and down it was way over 80 meter mark it was well well over that so what we decided to do in the comms room itself we put in fiber ports um or fiber media converters that converted it back to cap uh you know normal ethernet and we lay fibre um, through that floor all the way around to the other side of the building, drop down into the cabinet in there, and we put in four fibre um, channels um, so that had all the uplinks that we we needed, data, phone, uh, fax, and internet and spare. Nice and easy. 
So make sure you're within limits. So that's how you would design your floor layout. If you have difficulty, if this is the first time you're doing it and you're not sure, send me a copy of your floor layout. Tell me the, the size and length of the building in meters. Then I can work out where the console is going to situate in your floor plan to where you're going to lay all the cabling to nice and easy. So if you need help out that, comments, comments below or let me know and I'm happy to give you my email address and you can send me stuff through and I'll talk it out. Cat 5, right. Cat, you get Cat 5. Cat 5V, which is a common one that made now, it's great, great type cabling. And you can tell between patch cable and structure cable is this is much more stiffer. So this is a cable you'll lay between your PC user and the comms room itself. Now the, pat, the ones that's more flimsy than this is what we call patch lead cable. So you can actually buy that by the reel, cut the requirement off, put two boots on the end, the RJ45, clamp them down, you've got a patch cable. Now, making patch cable is not easy. I tend to throw that away and think, I'm not going to bother, because it takes time, because you've got to cut the cable, you've got to lay the cables completely flat out in the right order before you squeeze it into this boot. It's not an easy thing. You've got to really squeeze it into this boot. Once you've squeezed it in and it's in the right order, because sometimes you can actually twist around when you get up in there, it's not a lot of room for margin, then clamp it, do the other end, nine times out of 10, you find that they don't work. So you have to take the top off, start again. It's a pain in the bum, not worth your time because then the day you're paying for time you're getting probably getting charged for time you buy these probably pence uh 20p 10p depends how many you buy it in one great big go so it's always worth to buy these to come in diff this is the maximum the smallest they come in 0 0.5 meters and get these a meter two meters three meters in length you probably won't need any more than three meters as so long as you lay this 75 meters maximum then you've got yourself a five meter patch cable maximum you can go to and nine times in, I ended up using a lot of five meters, uh, sorry, f 0 0.5 meters, and one meter ones in my patch it, patch cam cabinet as well. <clears throat> you can lay this cable straight from a wall socket to an actual boot, what we call an RJ45 itself, and then into the switch. No point doing that because this is like keep get bending, and over time it ends up snapping. If you snap that, then you're screwed, and you have to lay the cable in again, <clears throat> or chop it back. Then you're going to find it's going to be shorter for your switch. <coughs> Excuse me. So lay this directly to a patch panel and use patch leads to patch where you want it to go in the cabinet, much more simpler. And if you decide to change the other end of this to like a, a phone port instead of a data port, then it's easier to literally come up, find where it's patched into, unconnect it, patch it back into whatever, whatever service you're gonna be using. When you lay these cables down, make sure you label them either end of the cable. So now, cause we lay, I normally lay these 16 pairs, 16 cables at a time. So what I tend to do is put a little put a little marks and tape around there, put that as like cable one, cable two, up right up to sixteen. Do the same at the other end, lay it down into the ceiling and where it's going to go to the comms room. When it comes out the other end, you know which cables go to which other end because you need to make sure you label them up. So when they go into the patch panel, you lay the patch panel into the net the names you put them. So I normally do them like um, one, two, and three and four, and go through up to like twenty four. Uh, and sometimes I can put numbers on it. So I put G for ground, um, B for basement, T for top floor, um, or, or even put a label on it, say second floor and stuff, so you know where they're going to. Then that can be remarked back onto the patch panel itself. That's important to do. Otherwise, if you lay this in, you don't know which end you're going to be patching or where it belongs to. And if you patch it all, then cable test it. Then you're going to be like saying, oh, well, that's one or two, but you don't know which other end you're actually connected to. So you end up probably spending hours finding what to plug this into. So make sure you label them both ends, lay, lay them in there and stuff. So make sure they stay on, stay on there, because also when you put them through the ceiling, they can get pulled off, so make sure they're wrapped around. I use sort of like a plastic tape that I can just mark on it. And you can buy these labeling guns, you can actually label the cables at the end. So when you lay it, mark the cables down to about about, about here, and and then then use this to pull it from. Then that way, when you get to the, the comms room, if this is all frayed at the end there, you just chop it down, then you know your label's still on there nice and intact. That's what, how I, I would would do it. Cat5 is good good uh, for any network, Cat5e. It, they normally charge between sort of £40 per box, give or take type of brand as well. And Cat6 can be anything up to like £80 a box, again, to depend on brand and stuff as well. So they're quite easy to lay in, lay in nicely. You need a, like a cabling, you need like, like a testing tool. So once you lay the cable in, you need to test it. So you need one of these tools just to tell you if all the pairs are actually matching uh, and in the right place. If not, you can go back and, and resort it back out again. 
You can buy more sophisticated ones than these. We've got LD, LD displays on them, which are better. You can spend up to like £500 on a nice bit of cabling, um, cabling um, tester. And that will actually tell you how long the actual cable you laid in as well. And it gives you other statistics and stuff like that on it as well. So um, that, so this is just the basics. And what we'll do is we'll do another video on this where we'll show you how to make up, um, how to patch this into a patch panel and obviously how to connect the other end as well. We'll show you how to do that as well. And we can also then show you how this actually works too, which is the uh, RJ45 and RJ11 network cable tester. The RJ11 is normally phone, phone type connect, um, ports, uh, uh, RJ45 is what you call ethernet cable itself. <clears throat> and we'll talk about fiber another time because fiber is very much a big topic and it's obviously a lot more complicate, complicate and complex than a cat5 itself as well so hopefully this open dries a little bit what's needed again i'll put all the prices and where you can buy all this from in the comments below and i'll show you the tools you need because this is not just the only tool you need you also need a, a cutting tool to cut the sleeve off of this uh, and there's a couple you can buy and just literally just stick it around and it pulls it off <clears throat> and you need a, a crimping tool to crimp the cable into the patch panel itself and also into the rj 55 socket and I'll also tell you where, what you need on this end for the user and what you need to purchase the other end as well. And I'll show, give you some details on racks you can buy and purchase. You can get 10 new wall racks to go up on the wall. So if you're doing all the cabling into one room to keep it nice isolated as its own network, then you need smaller cabinets to the big size cabinets that you'll put into a commons room. That's a full, I think, full 42U, which is quite tall. It's, about, it's taller than me. Um, so yeah. So any questions you've got on this, comment below and if you've got any cabling work you guys think oh this looks complicated we'll hire jack and jack can come and sort it for us give me a shout comment below and i'll send you my email address and i'm happy to do a quote for you it's not a problem still in the game so long as you don't mind me video in it <laughs> if you are local to me and you are cabling and you're confident cabling or you are a cabler yourself and you'd like me to come and video it because i'd be like to show my my viewers um a cable a guy cabling at work then let me know and I'll come down and film you cabling up and ha and what's involved as well. That would be good for my video to show. So anyway, anyway guys, um, have fun. And uh, next video we're going to do is talk a bit more about the, the Dell servers. We're going to talk about um, a bit more on the cabling, how to cable as well and what, what tools you need and how it all works. And anything you guys want to know, want to add to these videos, please comment below and I'll do my next video. So thanks for watching guys. Yeah.